Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to episode 51 of my Logic Pro 10 video tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the Ultrabeat, which is a drum synthesizer, a drum sampler, as well as a step sequencer. It's one of the most versatile um, drum and sampling instruments um, in Logic, and it's also one of the, the easiest ones to use as long as you uh, understand um, you know, some basic concepts of sequencing and sampling. Um, there is another sampler in Logic that we'll cover a little later. It's called the EXS24. It's actually even more versatile than Ultrabeat is, but most people favor Ultrabeat for, uh, for per per uh, percussion and, and drum sounds. So let me just go ahead and open up the Ultrabeat here on my instrument uh, insert. And one thing I want to show you is that um, kind, of like the, kind of like the drummer plugin, um, you can actually mix it in multi-output. You get multiple outputs for it. Um, so there's basically two modes here, stereo or multi-output. We'll get into the multi-output later, but just for now, I'm going to use stereo. Now, Ultrabeat um, works just pretty much like any other um, software instrument. You can, um, you can play it on your MIDI controller just like any other instrument. Um, the difference is that, of course, it's it's meant for drums, so each key is going to be a different uh, drum instrument, and the way the, the, the notes on the keyboard are laid out is apparent right here, and this kind of thin strip of a keyboard here. Um, the sounds in Ultrabeat start on C1 on the keyboard, so if you're using like a 49 key keyboard, or like a, I think like, yeah, like a 49 key keyboard or 61 key keyboard, usually C1 is the bottom, the bottom C on those. Um, and you can click on these and you'll hear the sound. So you can hear we've got kind of a kick drum there, tom sound, snare sound. Um, and you can, like I said, you can also play this on your MIDI controller. Um, I don't have mine plugged in, so I'm going to go ahead and use the um, musical typing keyboard, which is uh, command K. And so... Let me just go down an octave. So you can play it in like any other instrument. Um, and you can record that way too. You can just, you know, you could just simply choose a, a preset, um, arm the track, hit record, and, and just start playing in. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I'm going to use its uh, the Ultrabeat's built-in uh, sequencing features. Um, first of all, let me just choose a different, a different preset because this one's kind of boring. This is just the default. Uh, I'm going to use one under drum kits that is called, um, let's try Electro Bump. Let's try that one. And so what you'll see is it loads a whole new set of sounds. And each one of these uh, sounds here uh, is, you know, again, it's assigned to a particular key in the keyboard. So you can see what pitch it's associated with. Uh, but these uh, blue bars actually uh, aren't there just to look nice. They actually uh, serve a purpose. The blue bar is actually the volume of each voice. So if I want my kick drum here to be a little quieter, I can pull that down. And say I want my snare here to be a little louder, I can pull that up. Or maybe my clap. Um, you can also mute or solo each, um, uh, each zone or sample or whatever you want to call it. And you can also adjust the pan of each one as well. Um, okay, so for now, let's don't worry about all this stuff going on here. This, these are all like the synthesizer uh, elements of Ultrabeat. We'll talk about some of that later. Uh, what I want to get to is the step sequencer. And the way you can view the step sequencer is you can click on this um, uh, icon on here that says full view. What full view does is it pulls up the full view of the step sequencer. And the step sequencer is very simple. At least uh, by default, uh, each of these steps in a sequence are a sixteenth note. So two of them would be the length of an eighth note. Four would be um, a quarter note, and then uh, the whole step sequencer by default is separated into eight beats. So each one of these kind of uh, lighter gray lines represents the beginning of a new beat, a new quarter note. Um, so basically, we have two measures of four-four time here. Um, and most of um, most of the Ultra Beat presets will come uh, with some stock patterns built into them. So the way you can switch between those patterns is there's a little pattern menu down here, and I, you can click on that, and you'll see that there are 24 possible patterns that you can save just for this one uh, plugin. Um, 
each of the ones that have an SQ next to it means that that is a sequence, uh, that means that there is a sequence stored on that pattern. So right now we're on uh, pattern three and there's a sequence on it. Um, now these, these um, pitch names here, these are used for um, in the pattern mode for kind of key switching. You can switch between different patterns just by pressing a key on your keyboard. We'll talk about that later. But let's try pattern one instead. And you'll see it loads a slightly different pattern. So how do we play the pattern? Well, you can press spacebar to start and stop it. Um, but that's also going to start and stop your session in the background. So unless you want to audition a pattern with a session in the background, there's no need to do that. Um, you can start. You can basically start and stop the sequence just by pressing the play button right here. Okay, let's try another one. Let's try number eight. And there we go. Um, let me just throw a limiter on here because we're clipping pretty bad. There we go. That'll work. All right, so that's just how you can switch between your patterns. Now, let's say you want to make your own pattern. Um, you can either choose one of the blank ones that doesn't have an SQ, uh, SQ next to it, um, or you can kind of clear a pattern. So let's say I want to start on pattern one. You can just right click on the pattern, uh, the uh, pattern uh, menu down here, and you choose clear, and it clears the pattern for you. And so now I have a blank pattern to work with. Um, the great thing about step sequencing in here is it, it doesn't it, it allows you to not have to type in notes with you know uh, MIDI notes and piano roll you know and it's a it's a, a bit easier to work up here for drum patterns. Um, so let me just start building a pattern here. One of the great things about this is you can just press play, let the sequencer roll through, and you can kind of create a pattern on the fly. So let me just create one right now. Uh, and actually, there's a little trick I want to show you before I start creating it. Um, if you right click on any of these lanes here, there's a few options in here. I'm not going to show you all of them, but the two I find that are really useful are add every downbeat and add every upbeat. So if I want to just start with like a basic four on the floor kick pattern, you can right click on the kick lane and say add every downbeat. And then what will happen is it'll put one on every quarter note. Uh, likewise, you can also choose add every upbeat. So maybe I want to have something, you know, like an open hat on every upbeat. You just choose add every upbeat. And there you go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and re-clear the pattern here once again, because that's not what really what I want to do. But uh, let me just create a pattern here. So there we go. It's just in uh, you know a minute or two. I was able to kind of just put together a you know just a basic um, drum pattern, and 
one of the other things that you can do um, to to remove, um, like if you have like a whole series of of, of notes here, of steps in the step se- in your step sequencer, you can actually click to swipe to add them in, and you can also quick uh, click and swipe in the in reverse to also take them away. Um, the other thing that I I, I uh, forgot to mention is that there's also a bass instrument. Um, it, it's not in all of the Ultra Beat um, presets, but there's usually a bass instrument that goes from middle C and on up. Unfortunately, here you can really only control the note on middle C. But if I really wanted to build a you know a bass with this along as, uh, along with my drum pattern, I could always just go and dub that in by playing it in. Um, all right, so that's my pattern. Um, let's say that I want to copy this pattern over to pattern two and then slightly alter it because I don't want to have to recreate this whole pattern just so I can tweak one little thing. So what I can do is right click on the pattern menu again, say copy this time, go to pattern two, which is a completely different pattern, right click on that and say paste. And so what that'll do is it'll paste that pattern into this pattern. So this time I don't want a crash symbol at the beginning. I want just a kind of an open hi-hat. And I'm gonna change up the bass a little bit. So change the pattern slightly. Um, another thing that we can do, uh, let me go, eh, let's do it in this one. Another thing you can do is if you click on any particular uh, lane here, like actually right on the um, uh, right on the voice over here or the, the sample, um, what you can do is you can, you'll, be, you'll see basically the velocity for all of the notes in that lane down here. Uh, and so, you know, when you play a note, you're, you know, when you just click in a note, you're kind of stuck with one velocity. But um, when you click on it, you can go down here and you can kind of alter uh, the velocity for it. So let's say that on this ticka ticka ta right there, the 16th notes in my um, my hi hat, I want that to kind of you know grow. You know, I want it to kind of slowly kind of crescendo into a louder note. You can alter the velocity down here. And again, remember velocity all the way down is, would be one, and all the way up is going to be 127. So basically, this um, blue bar represents the length of the, um, or not the length, it represents the uh, how loud the velocity is going to be. Another thing that we can do is we can control the gate of the notes down here. For my open hi-hat here, let me just solo that out. It only la- it lasts a very short uh, period of time. And some of the sounds, not all of the sounds, but some of the sounds in the presets in Ultra Beat can be, have their gate altered. And the gate basically is just how long the uh, the sound lasts for. So instead of uh, dragging up or down this time, I'm going to drag to the right and extend the length of this note. Yeah, for this one it didn't do anything. So, um, so there are so there are other in, there are other sounds where the length of the note um, uh, may be affected by the gate down here. And actually, I can think of one right now. The bass, for instance, and maybe I want this first bass note to kind of last a full quarter note instead of just being a short little sixteenth note. Um, I'll just pull the gate out on that. Let's give that a shot. Yeah. So that this opens up the floodgates for a whole bunch of different rhythms we can create now. There you go. Uh, by the way, when you choose um, a particular um, voice and it's, it's corresponding lane, and you can edit you edit the lane down here. You can also add in the steps from down here as well. So I don't know if you saw that, but I added in a step here on 23, and it corresponds to the step that's up here as well. All right, let me go back to the first pattern and just draw out that very first bass note. 
And in my second pattern, I'm actually going to make this one short again. Okay, so let's say I want to get these patterns down into my song so I can kind of uh, look at it as, as MIDI data. Um, one, one approach to this, I'm just going to pull the ultra beat off to the side here. One uh, approach to this is to compose whatever it is you want underneath this and then just hit play and the ultra beat will actually play whatever pattern you have in here as long as the, uh, the sequencer power button is turned on here. So if I just hit spacebar to play my session, it's going to play that, that sequence. <laughs> Even though I don't have um, any MIDI data, MIDI data down here, um, and there's no MIDI regions or anything, um, the problem with this is that it's basically going to play pattern two continuously. You know, I want, I want pattern one and then pattern two, and I want it to kind of repeat back and forth. So what we need to do to make this work is there's a drag, a drag and drop feature, um, not to be confused with the sampling drag and drop feature, but a a, a sequence drag and drop feature where you can pull your sequence up here down into the arrange window and it'll create a, a MIDI region out of it. So let's go back to pattern one. And the way you do this is there's this little tiny button down here that next to pattern right here. And when you hover over that, it says drag to arrange window. So you just grab that thing, pull it straight down here and it creates a MIDI region out of the pattern that you have up here. So this is this was pattern one. And I'm going to go to pattern two and pull that down. There we go, right next to it. So now when I hit play, I'm going to hear pattern one and pattern two. There is one important thing to remember here. Um, Ultra Beat will always play, even if there's MIDI data down here, when you press spacebar, unless you turn the sequencer off. Because um, we have our patterns already down here as MIDI data, there's no need to have the sequencer on because otherwise what's going to happen is it's going to play the sequence up here and play the MIDI data down here. So I'm just going to make sure that the sequencer is turned off. Close out the plugin window. I'm going to go ahead and just use the text tool here to name my patterns. Let's call this pattern one, pattern two. There we go. And then let me just kind of repeat this a couple times. Remember, Command R uh, will repeat um, a region. So let's just repeat it. I already have it once, or the, the you know both of these played once. So I'll do it three more times. There we go. So now we have this alternating uh, between pattern one and pattern two. So that sounds okay. Um, I could work that into a song. I could add something else to it. Um, let's talk about Ultra Beats. Um, actually, I tell um, yeah. Let's talk about its ability to uh, to trigger um, whole patterns uh, live. Um, I'm not necessarily saying that this is something that you, you're going to do um, in a live situation. You you can use Ultra Beat live, but it's uh, most of, I'll be honest, most of Logic's instruments pale in comparison to um, uh, Ableton Live or just the interface of Ableton Live for live use. So I wouldn't really recommend Logic for, for, for live use unless you're just kind of using it as a as just a synthesizer and you've just got a basic MIDI controller and you just need to get sound out of it. Um, it doesn't have the intuitive um, uh, way of controlling the instruments like Ableton Live does. However, uh, there is a mode in it called pattern mode. What pattern mode does is it lets you trigger whole um, clips here, whole patterns based on what note on your MIDI keyboard you're pressing. So earlier I said that when you look at your sequences down here, your patterns, each pattern has a different uh, note number, uh, note and num uh, octave number next to it. So this is not C1, that's actually C negative one. So we're talking about the C that is not one octave, but two octaves lower than this C, which was C1. So you go backwards, C1, C0, C negative one. So we're talking about keys that are so low that they're not on most keyboards. Um, the whole point of this 
is that if you have, say, like a beat pad or a trigger pad or something like that on your keyboard or your MIDI controller, you can assign a particular pad to, say, C negative one, and then maybe C sharp negative one, then D negative one. Um, keys that you're not necessarily going to play for on, on the keyboard, but you might trigger them with a beat pad or something like that. Um, so when you press the pad that's assigned to C negative one, instead of hearing a note, what you'll actually hear is the whole sequence, the whole pattern that's on C negative one. Now, I don't have my MIDI controller connected, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the musical typing keyboard, and I'm also gonna pull my, um, I'm gonna pull my uh, octaves down into the, the negative range. So basically, my home row will start on C negative one. I'll just pull this off to the side here. As long as pattern mode is on here, if I press the key C negative one on my MIDI controller, or in my case, I'm using the musical typing, um, it will play the sequence. And if you press it again, it'll stop it. So if, let's try C sharp negative one. And if I press it again, it stops it. And you can see that it switched to that pattern. Um, and you can go up all of these other patterns. You can go all the way up to, you know, until you run out of, uh, run out of sequences on your patterns. Let's try uh, D negative one. So the advantage here is that you can kind of trigger these things in real time with a MIDI controller or like an MPC style beat controller and you can build sort of a live performance out of it. Um, there are four um, pattern modes. Uh, with toggle, basically what it does is whenever you play the, the next key, uh, the next uh, key trigger, it's gonna automatically switch to the next pattern. So if I play C negative one and then play E negative one, It's just going to switch in the middle of the pattern. Um, if you want it to switch on step one, you choose to toggle on step one. And so what that does is if I play C negative one and then play D negative one or E negative one, um, it won't switch the pattern. It'll play through the rest of this pattern and then switch on beat one, on step one. So I'll play uh, C negative one. And I'm going to press E negative one. And it didn't. There you go. It didn't switch until the first the first step. I pressed E negative one somewhere around 24, 25. So um, the other pattern modes are sustain and one shot trigger. Sustain basically plays as long as you hold the key down for. So let me actually let me bring my mus musical typing keyboard in here just so you can see what I'm doing. Um, with sustain mode, it only plays the pattern as long as I hold the key down for. So if I hold down neg uh, C negative one and then I let go, it stops playing when I let go of that key. So I'll just show you that again. Just watch the key down here. And it stops it. And then what uh, One Shot Trigger does is it automatically stops um, before it plays the sequence again. So it's just going to play the pattern through once and then it'll be up to you to press the next key on step one so so that's pattern mode um i have used it live a couple times i'm not really you know i'm not i wouldn't really consider myself an electronic music performer but i i have used it live a couple times just to uh to trigger uh drum patterns um and you can also record in this way you know you can just hit record up here uh and you know hit r to record and then just trigger, you know, just use your MIDI keyboard to trigger in what pattern you, pattern you want in whatever order you want. So you can use it musically, you know, just from a recording standpoint uh, as well as a live standpoint. Honestly, I, I prefer just the drag and drop feature. Uh, other things you can do in the sequencer before we move on to uh, sampling is you can adjust how much swing you want um, just by pulling this um, this up here. And it, it'll just basically take eighth notes and, and space them a little bit further, 16th notes and space them a little further so you get a bit more of a swung sound. Um, 
You can also change what the resolution of your pattern is. By default, it's 16th note, which means that each step is a 16th note. So if I want to take this whole pattern and double time it, I can change it to a 32nd note and everything is going to play back twice as fast. Which can be kind of cool. Uh, or half time it, I'll go down to 8th notes. Not very useful here. Uh, and if you have like a pattern that's got like a 12-8 or like a 6-8 or some sort of triplet feel, you can choose a 12th note, which is 8th note triplets, or a 124th note, which is 16th note triplets. You can choose a 12th note or 24th note uh, grid. And with these grids, it splits each beat into three notes rather than uh, four notes. So if you get like a 12-8 like a, like a, a song or a 6-8 song or something like that, um, you can you can experiment with that. Okay, um, let's talk about Ultra Beats sampling um, ability. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and save this preset because I wanna keep these patterns and I wanna come back to it later. So I'm just gonna say uh, save as, and I'll just call it Electro Bump um, episode 51. There we go. Um, Ultra Beat, as I said at the beginning of the video, is it's three things. It's a step sequencer, which we've gone over. It's a tone generator. It's a synthesizer, but it's also a sampler. So you you don't you're not necessarily stuck with the sounds that you get here. You can actually build your own custom kits just from samples you find on the internet or samples you buy or ones you make. So you can completely customize the sounds that are here, um, and you can also completely customize the synthesis of those of those uh, notes that are here too. You know, so you can take a preset kick drum, add a filter to it, or add a wobble effect with an LFO, or maybe layer another oscillator on top of it. So there's all sorts of things you can you can do to customize the sounds. Uh, to start, let's just start with its its sampling abilities. Um, what I always like to do um, with the Ultra Beat is to use the drag and drop samples kit which is basically just a blank kit with no sounds in it, and it's up to you to drag in your own sounds. So uh, to get to the drag and drop samples kit, you just go to drum kits, and you go to drag and drop samples. And what it'll do is it'll give you basically a blank kit with nothing on it. Um, I'm assuming that's just a, a visual glitch. I'm not really sure why that it shouldn't have, it should have nothing there. There we go, yeah. Sometimes my screen capture software uh, bugs out Logic more than Logic already is buggy. So um, so basically what I have is just a blank kit. And you can see if I click on these, I'm not getting any sound because it's just a blank kit with no sounds in it. So what you can do with the drag and drop samples kit is it automatically, what it does is it automatically initializes your synthesizer window here for sample input. Um, and by the way, when you click on a new sample, like if I go to sample two here, this whole screen, it doesn't look like it right now because they're all initialized, but this whole screen switches. So essentially you have 25 different synthesizer screens for each voice. So you can add a filter to the kick drum, but maybe not add a filter to the snare drum. So let's find some samples. Um, I like to go like for free stuff. I always tell people to go to like sampleswap.org. They're a great free place to find uh, um, samples or free sound. Uh, I happen to have, not a extensive, but I have a uh, drum sample library that I use. I, I mostly work with um, acoustic drums and drum replacements. So I, most of what I have are acoustic drums, but let me find a few sounds here in my sample library. Um, let's use this one. I've got a bunch of toms, kicks, and snares here. Let's say that I want C1 here to be a kick drum. So I just make sure that that voice is selected here and highlighted. And then I just grab the sample that I want to use for it. I'll use kick 8 here. Just drag it right in here. It'll highlight. Let go of the mouse. And you'll see that, hey, there's, the, uh, there's our sample. And so now when I click on C1 we get that sample. Um, you can also name the sample here. So I'm gonna just double click on it and choose kick. And there we go. One of the um, important things about sampling drums is that you want your sounds to play as one shots. Uh, a one shot is basically just a sample that plays from beginning to end regardless of how long you hold the key down. 
The problem with our kick drum here uh, at the moment, let me just uh, do an add every downbeat. I'll get rid of some of them and press play. Is that the sound is only, you can hear it's very cut off. We're not hearing the whole sound. We're not hearing the sound of the room as well. Um, it The sound is only playing as long as the gate is down here. So uh, essentially I'd have to pull this all the way out in order to hear the whole sample. So in that first and you can hear a little bit of the reverb and the echo from the room. Um, that's a big pain to have to do that for every single note. So what you can do instead is you can go over to your envelope over here and by default it pulls up envelope number four which is tied to uh, amplitude or amplifier, basically volume. Um, and what you can do is you can take your envelope, grab the release time down here and pull this all the way out. And what this will do is this will guarantee that up to 10 seconds, up to 10 seconds, this sample will play completely on every single note, regardless of what the gate is. So I'm getting the full tail of my, of my sample. Um, another thing that we can do is we can adjust the start point of the sample here. There's these max and minimum sliders. They have to do with maximum and minimum velocity. Um, I want, and you can see there's a bit of a gap at the front of the sample there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my max slider right in front of the transient. And I'm going to pull the minimum slider a little bit further in. Something like that. Um, I could have set them to the same point and um, it would have been fine. But um, the minimum, what the minimum, what the max and min sliders do is they, they basically adjust the start point of the sample based on velocity. So if I have maximum velocity, 127, the sample's gonna start here. With a lower velocity, like 50 or 60, the sample's gonna start later on in the sample. So and actually, I'm, actually, I'm gonna move this a little bit further. The advantage to this is that you can kind of soften a sample by not starting it right at the, the hard transient. So if I wanted to do something like this, let me just uh, pull the velocities up here. And let me just do that, that, and that. There we go. So if I want something that does um, just kind of like a quick little kick, 16th note kick, something like this. These quick ones sound a little weird. They sound a little fake sounding because they're it's just like the same volume, the same presence, um, you know, twice in a row really quickly. Um, if you pull the, the the velocity down, normally that just adjusts the volume of the sample. But now that we have a minimum and maximum start point, um, these lower velocities, if I pull the velocities down, are actually going to sound slightly different than the max velocities. And I'm actually going to go ahead and pull the max up just a hair. There we go. And sometimes you have to play with it because sometimes you'll get a little like a little click in there. Let me just pull this. Actually, let me pull just just pull it all the way down because it's minimum. Yeah, it's so quiet; it's not doing anything. Let me pull this forward a bit. So that velocity was 84. Just yeah, sure, we'll, we'll try that. Um, sometimes, you, like I said, sometimes you have to play with it because otherwise you get you'll get like a little click in the signal, which I really don't I don't want because it's not going to sound very good. And you can also try adjusting the minimum slider up here. There we go. 
So these lower velocities, and it took, a, it took a little bit of tweaking, but these lower velocities are going to start later on in the waveform and give us sort of like a softened uh, kick drum sound. You could also just put another kick drum in, in here on a separate note as well and just make it, uh, you know, make the uh, make it a different sample. You know, you could have a soft and a loud kick in the same instrument. All right, let's move on to the snare drum. Uh, on sample five here, I'm going to add my snare. And I'm going to use snare seven. Pull this in for my sample library. There we go. And for this, I'm just going to throw it on basically two and four. Now for this, we're having the same problem we had before. We have a sample that is not a one shot, and so we're only hearing a, a tiny portion of it. Um, so what we have to do, again, is pull the release time all the way out on our fourth envelope. All right. So give me a second. I'm going to off screen this. I'm just going to go and um, find a, a few more samples, build build a basic kit. I'm going to drag everything in, uh, maybe adjust some of the panning and adjust some of the levels, build a basic pattern on it uh, about, uh, with that. And I'll be right back and just uh, have that as a demonstration for you. All right, so we're back off screen. I just uh, dragged in some new samples. I actually completely replaced the kick and the snare with different samples. I just decided I didn't, I didn't like those samples. Um, I also I added in an open hi-hat, a closed hi-hat, and also some just kind of synth hits. And so this is what I came up with. <laughs> All right, so that's okay. Um, one last thing I want to show you, because I'm gonna have to end this video. Uh, this is gonna end up being a two-part video. It's it's gonna have to be. It's just too long. Um, but uh, one last thing I want to show you is uh, something called an exclusive group, or sometimes called a hi hat group or a choke group. Um, let me just solo out my hi hats here, and what you'll see is that see and here is that I have an open hat and then some closed hi hats. And it'll actually be even more apparent if I add hi-hats in more regularly on like an eighth note. And I'll do this uh, same thing like here with an open hat. So I get something like this now. The problem is this really isn't functioning like a, a real hi-hat because when you have an open hi-hat, and you open up the you open up the two symbols and then you close it to play it closed the open sound is choked by the closed sound so what we need to do is we need to set up these two uh, hi-hat sounds in a group that's a monophonic exclusive group so where that group can only have one voice in it it's very simple to do uh, what you do is you click on the first hi-hat go over here where it says group and choose a group I'm gonna say group one and then you go over to your other hi-hat and you put that hi-hat in the same group. So both of these hi-hats are now in an exclusive monophonic group, also known as a hi-hat or a choke group. So we end up with something like this. So the open hi-hat is, clo is uh, choked by the, uh, by the closed hi-hat. And let's try this. I'll just vary the pattern just a little bit. Let's try this out with, our, with everything else. And there we go. All right, so that uh, concludes this uh, part of the video. I'll have to do a part two on Ultrabeat. Um, in that video, we'll talk more about the kind of the, the synthesis elements. Uh, we might get a little deeper into um, uh, how to mix with the Ultrabeat, especially the multi-output um, function. And if I have time, I, I'll also show the uh, the step uh, the step mode as well. So so I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.